Hello everyone and welcome to another video and to what is another minimum system requirements PC build. In this series we take a look at just how accurate developer stated minimum specs for games truly are. This is a PC built in accordance with Ubisoft's stated minimum system requirements for Far Cry 6. It features an Intel Core i5-4460, a 4GB GTX 960 and 8GB of dual channel RAM. Now I've noticed that the official requirements page has changed a bit. It used to say 1080p 30fps and 1080p 60fps, now it just says 30 and 60fps. This change is a bit concerning, but perhaps Ubisoft felt as though asking 30fps at 1080p with these specs was a bit much, but I guess we'll have to find out. The reason I went with the i5 and 960 instead of the Ryzen and RX 460 is because these parts are cheaper on the used market. It's as simple as that. Despite the change with the official page, we are going to be jumping straight in at 1080p. I'm kicking things off with the low settings here with TAA on because it eliminates jagged edges and doesn't really affect performance. Dynamic resolution, resolution scaling and FSR is off for the moment, but we'll be enabling that later. So 1080p low. The game looks fantastic and runs with at least 30 FPS quite comfortably. I was a bit concerned with the four core i5 at first because CPU usage, was sitting at 90 to 100% when we fired the game up, but after a minute or so it dropped significantly. Now I'm not sure why this occurred, but every time I've started the game since, the usage has been much more reasonable. I did notice a couple of micro stutters here and there, particularly in areas with more NPCs. It's also clear that the 4 gig 960 was a good call on Ubisoft's part. Even at low, we're using over 3 gigs of VRAM, so while I'm not sure how much worse the 2 gig version of the card would have performed, I'm sure it would definitely have been a few frames behind, at the very least. If we continue on at native 1080p but switch to the medium visual quality preset, the game does become a little more pleasant on the eye, but honestly, it already looked very good, and anyone concerned with losing a few frames here might find it best to remain with the lowest preset instead. Now that said, we're not actually sacrificing too much in the way of performance. We're still seeing at least 40 FPS on average with these settings, and it's also important to remember that I'm only testing presets. Graphics options are there to be fiddled around with individually, and doing that might mean that you get an even more similar performance experience with mostly medium settings as you would with all low settings. I should also mention that I'm only a couple of hours into the game. The performance may differ in certain areas of the map and there may be some really demanding little pockets as well that are more demanding than other places, as can be the case with some titles. There can be some areas that really tank frame rates. So far though, and so good. Switching to high still gives us at least 30 frames per second on average, which is quite surprising, and from what I've seen, the game seems to be quite well optimised, despite what some videos have been saying. It's certainly more lenient towards older CPUs with a lower core count. Plus, we ran it on the dual core 3000G yesterday, with no graphics card as well. So what about 60 FPS? Is it even possible with the minimum system requirements? Do we have to massively sacrifice resolution? Well, thanks to the implementation of FSR, the same tech that made playing on the 3000G yesterday possible, we can increase our frame rate without too much of a visual sacrifice. Now, of course, you can turn the resolution down if you want to a lower native or adjust the resolution scaling option, but I decided to try out FSR instead because it works really well here, even with this old NVIDIA GPU. FSR or Fidelity FX Super Resolution reduces the game's render resolution and upscales it to your monitor's native res, that's putting it very simply. The preset you choose depends on how the game is rendered, and with Far Cry 6 I chose the balanced mode because it promised not to sacrifice visual quality too much, or while delivering higher frame rates. And it certainly does just that. Keeping the high settings but enabling the balanced FSR mode increases our frame rate from 35 to 49. Now interestingly, from here on out we're going to be seeing very similar 1 and 0.1% lows with every setting, though the averages will improve as we move through the presets. Switching back to medium with the same balanced FSR preset meant an almost 60 FPS average, though not quite. This is still an improvement over the 42 FPS at native 1080p. 
As I mentioned, the percentile lows don't really differ, but overall, the change to the average performance is a very welcome one. If we go all the way back down to low now, this is where we see 60 frames per second, with FSR on, of course. 64 was the average, and although the 1% low didn't really change too much yet again, the 0.1% figure saw some improvement. Ubisoft's stated minimum requirements are, if anything, quite well thought out, and anyone looking to use FSR will have an even easier time running this game with a quad-core i5 and GTX 960. Now, you could probably get away with a lot less hardware-wise as well, at least in terms of GPU power. For native 1080p players, a 4GB graphics card is definitely a wise choice though. I'm going to finish off this gameplay by just playing some more of the game and uh, seeing what happens basically. So as you can see here, I've uh, found this horse and we're just going to be riding to another outpost and seeing how the frame rate keeps up while doing so. Now I'm actually really enjoying Far Cry 6 so far. Some of the reviews that I've read have been a little bit mixed, but in my opinion it looks good, it plays really well. I like the setting and so far I'm liking the story too. We're just going to approach this checkpoint and wipe out all of these guys. Now there will certainly still be dips below 60 frames per second, even with FSR enabled at 1080p. Now your best bet to retain a constant 60 plus FPS is either enabling the performance FSR mode, which will make the graphics more noticeably um, suffer, let's say, or you could turn the game all the way down to a native 720p, but then again, you are going to be sacrificing the visual quality. I think 1080p at low with the FSR preset set to balanced gives you a nice sort of balance between visual quality and performance. This is my personal preference in terms of playing this game, but it is all, of course, up to each individual player. Some of you might prefer a solid 30 FPS with higher settings, and some of you might want to turn the game down as low as possible in order to try and maintain a plus 60 FPS all of the time. But as I said, it's entirely up to you, but it's just nice to know that the minimum specs stated by Ubisoft can actually handle Far Cry 6 and handle it quite well, considering that this is a game that's uh, arrived on next-gen platforms. It might be the fact that it's still available on PS4 and Xbox One as well that's saved its performance on PC, if, if you know what I mean. But there we go. Thank you very much for watching the Far Cry 6 Minimum System Requirements video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know how your hardware runs the game, especially if you have a low-end card, something like a 750 Ti, for example. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.